integrating different things for weed control in blackberries, we are actually limited in that regard because blackberry is a perennial crop. And then once you put it in, you have a fixed place that it can be and you cannot rotate it with other stuff like we do agronomic crops. So once it's there, it's set. And then that's all you got to work with. And so the only chance that you can actually integrate something that is very useful in the long run is preparing the site ahead of time so that you are not going to be overrun by pre-existing perennial weeds and also not being overrun by pre-existing um, annual weeds. And so the thing is, if, so it really depends on where this area is coming from in terms of previous situation, right? So, so if you're just starting, then, then this is the best time for you to start weed management is before your blackberry is in. Once it's in the ground, then that's it. That's, that's, you, you don't have much choice, but deal with what's there. So the one thing that we need to realize ahead of time is that the soil has so much seed bank depending on what was there before. And so if you had been practicing some clean crop culture several years prior, then you are already at a great advantage for putting in a perennial crop because then you don't have to do much to it in order to keep it out. So selection of site is an important part also of that. And I know that you're very familiar with your fields. Nobody's more familiar about that than you. So you would know which are the parts that are most favorable for blackberry. And so blackberry doesn't like wet seeds, I guess for most of our crops, that's true. And so in, in, some, in some cases too, so, so the, there are indica indicators of uh, like a poorly drained area. And so I, I think again, you're familiar with that. So we, plant species that love um, wet places. But then the one thing that is not very obvious would be some um, other soil property that could be problematic, for example, pH situation. So in some areas, there may be a problem with acidity, soil acidity, so low pH. And so sometimes before you send your soil sample, you may already have some clue if you look at vegetation. So for example, th this one here that is shown, buttercups and rice, annual rice flat sedge, those are um, indicators of wet areas. Um, although they could also grow in dry areas, but they love uh, wet places. Um, other, other weeds will be good indicators of um, soil acidity. But anyway, so we're talking about that um, a year prior, right? And so then when you do that, then you end up with a blank space and um, Weeds love invading blank spaces. And so in order to prevent new emergence, control them, you actually need to do something, for example, plant some cover crops. Now, I put there like rye plus crimson clover. It's a rye is a good grass cover and uh, crimson clover is a legume. It would have some nutrients in there. But there are other choices of cover crops. And so a lot of times cover crops are very site specific. So um, you would actually need to have a little bit of experience in your locality of what, what type of cover crops would be, would be good for, for you. But that's just an example. So that means that you don't wanna leave the, the, the field empty for a long time because all it will do is grow more weed. And so then, um, and then of course, then all the planting part and all the production part, you're already trained about that. So I probably don't need to go into that, but, but so you know how to plant blackberry. Um, so some examples of, some examples of um, uh, plants that love acidic soil would be some of these like ox eye daisies, perennial, perennial uh, plantings and nutweeds. And so they would uh, love, and also um, red, red sorrels. So if you're familiar with red sorrels, those are also um, acid soil loving um, species. And then um, the general principle also that would go at the beginning of the establishment of blackberry is your choice of variety. So and also the, the general rule of thumb that 
a plant that is healthy is actually your best defense against you know um, weeds because because if your plant is healthy it's gonna be lush it's gonna grow fast and so it's it's you know so you just have less problem if you have an, a healthy plant so um, you have a list of sources of <laughs> certified um, providers of blackberry plants so utilize those make sure that you have good good plants to go in there and then when the blackberries are new that is the that is the part the, that is the period where um weed control is most critical and it's also most difficult because in terms of herbicides there are only a couple of herbicides that are labeled for applying on um, newly planted blackberries the rest are the rest require that you wait at least a year or two years before you can use them and so which means that if you're an organic grower then then you don't really have much choice also <laughs> but um you put the blackberry on a bare soil right and then and then you have to mulch it either with uh, black plastic or or land landscape fabric which would be your kind of um commercial in organic mulch or you could spread um straw uh, along the bed so that you can keep the waste from growing there right and so the the choice would be yours as to what is appropriate uh, mulch for you and and um, also in your budgets how much um, budget you have to, to be able to use for uh, putting mulch in there whether it's plastic or just natural um, straw mulch so um so when when it's new like this so this one here is um, actually a young blackberry at the southwest research station in hope and uh, in here they use black uh, landscape fabric and so what you'll notice is of course in the middle uh, the middle where the blackberries are is bare and so what that means is you actually have to spend uh, some resources or time to keep these needles um, weed free. And so if, if you're not organic grower, then there is an option of applying, um, uh, what is that, Princep, I think is labeled for new blackberry. Um, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. And then um, otherwise you have to hand weed that grow middle so that you won't allow any perennial weeds to come in and, and, and weeds to come in there. So meaning that even if even if you have put plastic or some mulch ground cover, there is still a need for supplemental weeding or supplemental application of a herbicide where the where the soil is bare. So so that is something to, to consider and and um, and so in this process we will also need to for those who are not yet familiar with the general categories of herbicides um, we will need to remember that they are grouped in certain categories so there are herbicides that we can use only um, for before the or herbicides that are effective only before the weeds emerge. So those are called pre-emergent herbicides or soil active herbicides that do not have um, foliar activity. So some examples I listed there. So there's Debrinol, Soroslan, um, Snapshot Gallery. Those are herbicides that would prevent certain weeds from emerging but will not do anything to them once they have already come up of the soil right so that's important to consider when you're making these applications the other big group would be the post-emergence herbicides those herbicides that have foliar activity so uh, examples are common gamoxon roundup um, size among these here size is the only one that is labeled for um, organic uh, production and then the others are you know for non-organic production so and then there are some herbicides that would have 
pre-emergence activity and foliar activity. So some examples would be Calypso, Karmic, Princep, Timbar, Solicam. So meaning, so what is the importance of kind of being familiar with this? Um, that means that these herbicides down here, the number three group, um, it may injure the blackberry if you put them on when the blackberry is already growing. And so that's why um, these types of herbicides are recommended for dormant application or before bud break application. Because for example, um, Princep, Timbar, Solicam, if you put that on leafing blackberries, then it could, it could uh, either burn or bleach the leaves of the blackberries. And so um, depending on how much you had contacted the blackberry plants would, would be potential yield loss in, in that situation. So, so kind, of, uh, kind of consider or pay attention to these groups of herbicides when you're choosing what herbicides you're going to put at certain times of the year. So, um, and then when we, use foliar herbicides there are also two kinds of these so there are foliar herbicides that can move within the plant and there are foliar herbicides that do not move within the plant or has have limited movement so foliar herbicides that are mo mobile in the plant we call systemic so um uh, roundup is a systemic herbicide the selective grass herbicides are systemic. So select, for example, or post and fusillate, those are systemic. It can move within the plant. And then, um, and then these others also can move within the plant. So what is the practical um, implication of that? If we apply Roundup, um, when the blackberry has already some leaves, and then it contacted leaves of blackberries even if it's just the tips of the branches or the base toward the base of the plant lower leaves for example well roundup will travel move within the plant so so drift or contact with roundup spray is potentially more injurious to blackberry compared to uh contact or drift from <coughs> something that does not move so which one would not move so for example dramoxone it's a contact herbicide, it does not move. So when it hits the blackberry leaves, it will just burn the spots where the droplets are, are hit, and then it would not hurt the other parts of the plants that are not contacted by the herbicide spray. So that's why um, Dermoxone is ideal for like directed spray with minimal damage to other parts of the blackberry plant, right? And so that's why we need to be very, very careful with um, glyphosate application, for example, because it can move within the plant. There's also another herbicide called AIM, and it, it's also contact, and so it's kind of like Dromoxone. It just, it just hurts the, the leaves that are, that are hit by the spray. And then that organic herbicide um, site that is also kind of like Dromoxone. It's also contact herbicide. It does not move within the plant. And so it would it would be safe, you know, safer to spray on blackberry. So that's on the that's on the blackberry side. Now, when we talk about weed control side, then there is this other um, aspect of it, right? That we have to balance. So we're talking about contact and does not move. That means that in order for all the weeds that are there to be killed by it, we need what? <clears throat> we need like almost 100% coverage because the ones that are not contacted by the herbicide, they're not going to be killed, right? And so, which means that if the weed cover is thick, then we may be killing the most of the weeds that are on top and then those would die off and then the ones that are going to be at the bottom will regrow faster, right? So. So that's the thing with contact herbicides such as Gamoxone or AIM or Scythe. You need um, repeated application as needed because the lower parts of the weeds that are not contacted by the herbicide, those will probably remain green and those will regrow. So 
regrowth is much more likely with contact herbicides. Um, so the advantage of systemic herbicide is that we do not need 100% coverage to, to have a, a good kill because, because it can move, right? So, so those are two kind of principles that, that are important to consider in making herbicide applications, uh, whether it's blackberry or something else. So now this is um, the couple of, yes, so these are the couple of herbicides that can be put on new blackberries. So if you plant your blackberry in the fall, then that means that the weeds are not actively growing then. So you actually have a longer window to be weed free for a while. And then it would allow soil to settle and then the roots get kind of fixed in the soil and then, and then and then it's safer to use a pre-emergence herbicide such as one of these and in the early spring, right? So, so the thing to consider is, although it says on the label that these two can be used on new blackberries, um, I wouldn't advise like planting your blackberry today and putting this herbicide next week or, you know, sooner. Um, I would allow the soil to settle and for the transplants to be there, you know, trying to get established a little bit before putting this um, soil applied herbicides on it, just to just to be safe. Because if you get a if you if you get a big rain, for example, or a, or a snowfall or something, then it melts. Then it then it it brings that herbicide layer into the root zone, and then that could actually injure your new your new blackberries and the the new roots that are going to come out of that. So so be careful with this. Uh, consider that um, when the blackberries are new, everything is delicate, and and it doesn't have much energy to fight herbicide stress. So um, I would wait, you know, a couple of months before. If you have to, um, before putting in um, one of these uh, pre-emergence herbicides, All right? So, um, what is that? Uh, and and therefore, that's also the important. That's also why it is important to plant the blackberries on a firm seed bed, so that that soil actually uh, stays there in place. And then, if you if you if you apply your first uh, pre-emergence herbicide, it doesn't. Um, percolate into the soil uh, deep into the deeper into the root zone. So that's also one reason for keeping that soil firm um, around uh, around your plants. Now um, this so you would want to consider also uh, you would you would want to look at the label as far as what species are specified for for that particular herbicide. So for example we're looking here, these two actually have very different uh, spectrums. So Devrinol actually has a narrower spectrum of species it can control compared with uh, Princep. So Princep is a uh, group five. It actually has a broader um, spectrum of activity. It can control several annual grasses and several broadleaf weeds. And Devrinol is a little bit more limited. So, but also in terms of potential injury depending on soil um, uh, soil type, uh, Princep would also tend to, to be the one that is a stronger herbicide. It would also tend to be the, the one with a higher risk of, of causing some injury on the, on the new blackberry, right? So just, just kind of consider that. And then, and then also notice that they are labeled for a dormant application. So before the, the, the blackberries uh, bud, bud up in the spring uh, or in the fall when the blackberries go. So that's important consideration. So, um, so it's like, okay, for if we're doing organic production, there is really not much choice for soil applied, you know, herbicide organic production wise. I mean, there is the website that is called Omri where they they list the organically approved um, herbicidal compounds. Um, not very much there really for pre-emergence because everything that's listed there um, herbicide wise are, <laughs> are um, foliar herbicides. 
Now, this one here is uh, something that they use um, for lawns, like weed control in lawns. And um, uh, they claim it can control up to 60% of crabgrass and, and maybe some other annual grasses, but, but the spectrum of this is narrow. And so, and so I, and I haven't, I don't have any experience with this. And so I cannot guarantee what else it can control. Um, I have done some greenhouse tests on this, comparing that with rice hull and, and, and rice bran and, and the rice material actually is more effective in controlling annual grasses and some annual broad leaves compared with, with corn gluten. And so um, it helps. I mean, even if, if, if you're a organic grower and that's all that you have, it, it helps if you can reduce your population of weeds by half, right? I mean, that means you're gonna be calling 50% less weeds, right? So um, it doesn't have to be 100%, anything, anything that helps will be better. And so, okay, just a general review, some of the, a lot of the weeds that you would want to manage with the pre-emergence herbicides, of course, are annual. And, and the pre-emergence herbicides are not useful for controlling perennials. And so these annual grass weeds are the ones that are going to be controlled by the pre-emergence herbicides with grass activity. So for example, um, Sorflan, uh, Prowl, Gallery, and, and those broad spectrum pre-emergence herbicides, they can control these types of weeds, annual grasses. So, Large crabgrass, goose grass, jungle rice, barnyard grass, foxtails, those are controlled by those um, herbicides. Now, some herbicides would also like gallery, for example, and, um, and, uh, and the group five herbicides, those are going to control also annual broadleaf weeds. So for example, pigweeds, morning glories, lamp quarters, ragweed. Now, um, Something like uh, something like uh, uh, sorflan that's not effective on morning glory because morning glory is, has bigger seed, and and sorflan is effective only on on broadleaf weeds that have small seeds. So what are these? So it would have some activity on palmer pigweeds with small seeds and lamb squatter has small seed. It would have activity on that. And so purslane has small seed, and, and so that would be reduced by uh, something like surfland. Bigger seeded weeds, uh, surfland would not be very effective on those. So kind of those considerations. In the spring or in the, well, yeah, in early spring, the, 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 there are winter annual grasses that we would also like to control because for example, annual bluegrass can be a big problem. And so those pre-emergence applications that we do before bud break, those are intended to control these annual um, winter grasses and annual winter broadleaf weeds such as these. So um, hinbits, um, geraniums, uh, chickweeds, and mayweeds, those are the ones that could be prevented um, going into your blackberry fields if you put pre-emergence herbicides in the spring. And then when we come to the perennial stuff, then that's more difficult because uh, that's just because there's not much we can do in, in, in a blackberry uh, orchard plantation to control these. So fescues, Bermuda, Johnson grass, Dallas grass, perennials, difficult to control. Uh, the pre-emergent stuff will not work on it. And whatever we can do like Roundup, would be effective on this one, but then if your blackberry is growing, then cannot use that. And so um, we can burn this down with glomoxone, but then of course it will come back. You'll have to do repeated application in order that we can um, keep this down, right? And then we also have this perennial broadleaf weed. So this is like, so there's a, a curly duck or broadleaf duck, the bindweeds, the plantains, and the horse nettles. So these are perennial broadleaf weeds. Um, not much we can do um, when the blackberry is actively growing to control these. So this has got to be controlled, you know, be, um, after we harvest the blackberries and, and into fall. And then we, we could also have some um, sedges. So 
Earlier we mentioned annual sedge, and so that's easier, but if we have perennial sedges, then that's a problem. So we have the yellow nut sedge is a potential problem in blackberries, maybe purple nut sedge, not, not as much. And so, um, and there are many, well, not many, but this will be some of the, the ones. So, so then, so then we go back to, okay, what are the other options for herbicides? You know, this is herbicide option. These are soil applied. So these are, this here are pre-emergent herbicides and, and we have listed this earlier. And so you will notice that their timing of application is going to be early in the year. So there's a lot of things that we need to do early in the year or, or choices to be made at the beginning of the year, what kind of herbicide you can use. So. Managing um, the blackberry patch has got to be a year round um, decision making on whether what you do early in the year and what you do after harvest in order to keep the blackberry um, uh, field clean. And allium is a pre emergence herbicide, so kind of like, um, kind of like the surf land and all that, except that it is a, it is a strong pre emergence herbicide. It stays longer in the soil, which is ideal for a perennial crop like blackberry, and it has actually activity on Bermuda grass. So, so we apply allium when when the blackberry is dormant. So you can apply it in the you know in the spring uh, before bud break, and and you will see Bermuda control that would last for about three months. And so, and so, you know, so if you have allium and then, and then you pair that with another herbicide, then you have controlled your Bermuda grass um, for a long time. And then you can apply um, maintenance treatments in the fall to follow that. So, um, so that's a good uh, broad spectrum pre-emergence herbicide that we are, we would, we're planning on adding into our blackberry recommendation. Um, and then, these are still uh, pre-emergence choices. And so this would be for a little bit older blackberry now, uh, some, some blackberry plants that are a year and a half, more than a year and a half old. The same principle applied, apply them, apply them in the um, pre-bud uh, pre or for example, this Callisto is pre-bloom. So you just have to pay attention at the, on the timing of these. Um, the, the three down here, the three below, so surfland, gallery, and snapshot, these are pre-emergence herbicides are actually more flexible in the time that they can be applied. So they can be applied any growth stage um, as, as needed. So, so these three are, are good ones to use as your sequential um, herbicide in the program. So, so you would want to apply herbicides that are just for dormant application in the early part of the year. And then for follow-up application, like in April or May or June, you can use um, one of these because they can be applied. Well, except gallery has got to be of non-berry. So, so that's one that would eliminate gallery uh, from your choice if the blackberry still fruits are still there. But um, surf land can be applied, you know, any time of the year because, because it's, um, good for any growth stage. And so surfland is a good um, herbicide to apply after your, you know, strict pre-emergence, pre-bud or application, um, herbicide application. Um, and then also snapshot is non-bearing, so you cannot do that when there is uh, fruit on the plant, but after harvest, it's a good option for keeping um, new weeds from emerging in the patch. So, so this would be what your um, field would look like in the early part of the year. And so you're gonna be fighting some primroses and all that kind of stuff. So that's why a burn down treatment is important. And then with your burn down treatment is where you tank mix it with a soil applied, a soil, a pre-emergence herbicide. And then, so your weed free strip could look like this in the summer. Um, if you're not using black plastic or any kind of mulch. So if it's just bare, then in the summer, this is when blackberries are about to be harvested. Actually, this is like during the time when they had already got done picking. And so you'll have some, you, you could have some nut sedges in here uh, come and then the Bermuda could creep in there. 
And so that's why post-harvest maintenance is important because you don't want this um, clean strip to be invaded by perennials. So, so that's important to keep that in check. And so see if you have black plastic, then, um, then you're safe, you know, for that, for the time that the black, the black plastic there. Otherwise, you'll have to do more maintenance applications or, or operations in the fall. And so um, this would be now foliar. So the choices of foliar herbicides are these. And, and so the thing to pay attention to when you're using foliar herbicides are, um, so we know contact versus systemic. The other thing is what is the pre-harvest interval? So if it is bearing, then uh, for example, this post herbicide uh, grass only application that has a 45 day um, pre-harvest interval. So what does that mean? When do you harvest your blackberry? June, July. So anyway, so now when, so once you know your blackberry and you know when the fruits are going to be harvested, you have to backtrack from that. You know, you have to make some prediction and, and backtrack from that and determine when is the time, the latest time that you can apply a, a, a grass only herbicide on the blackberry, right? So you have to kind of make these decisions ahead of time, like plan it. And uh, even Roundup is labeled for directed application, but like we said, you have to be very careful with that. And Paraquat is labeled for directed application. It has a three week pre-harvest interval. So also be careful about that. Now with size, there is no um, pre-harvest interval. And then, and then there's something that we have seen this year. Um, the blackberries here kind of got this symptomology like severe cupping. We don't see that anymore. It recovered from that, but occasionally you may run into this situation. And so what would be the potential causes of this? I mean, in general, we'd say, okay, it could be a phenopsy type herbicide. And what are these? So it could be 2,4-D, it could be dicamba, it could be triclopyr, it could be picloram, it could be amino pyrrolid, but Anyway, I have listed some of the of the formulations that would contain these types of herbicides. And then so, but we're blackberry growers. We're not in the middle of the agronomic crop area, right? And so what are the potential places that these could originate? And so usually it could be from roadside applications maybe, or it could be from pasture applications, non-crop applications, where, where these types of herbicides are recommended. So where do you recommend Remedy or Grayzone or Cimarron, stuff like that. So um, with, the, with the, what we're learning from Dicamba this year and the year before, we know that these types of herbicides can be carried far from its intended target just because of many reasons. And so, um, but when we have that symptomology, we could also see there that it would recover as long as it's not that bad. So um, just kind of, you know, don't panic when you see something like that. It probably could happen every once in a while and the crop will recover and I think yield will be okay. This is data that we have from here, from uh, our two year old blackberries and just a few of the programs that that I took out of the subset of data and um, highlighting the ones that are the best yielders uh, from that year. So this was, uh, so you can see where we have Allium here and, and, and a program of Allium in the spring followed by Solicam in, in mid-November or Princep in the spring followed by Surfland in mid-May. So there are these programs that we tested. So, but the, my note for you is that Relay is not labeled for Blackberry. And um, we, I just decided to, to put it here so that we can see what it does to Blackberry. And uh, what's labeled, of course, is Gramoxone. So meaning that in these programs, you could actually replace Relay with Gramoxone, for example. 
and then and then you have the the burn down effect plus the the uh, pre-emergence effect right the residual herbicide effect so um princep and uh, chateau for example is a good treatment followed by solicam in the fall but chateau is also not labeled for blackberries so these are experimental programs so we're just checking how blackberry would respond to some of these um compounds so chateau is labeled on blueberry but not on blackberry so um that's why we wanted to see how blackberry would react to that um princip and prowl and then um dual is not labeled for blackberry it tends to actually kind of reduce the yield of blackberry not significantly but numerically when we looked at it on older blackberries and also on these young ones it tends to to bring the yield a little bit down compared to the others but but not significant but anyway we're kind of um looking at that and then talking to jackie about um continuing this test to see uh to look at these treatments more and and other treatments in the future possibly so um in terms of herbicide injury from these applications so solicam is labeled for blackberry right but there are cases where the blackberry would show some bleaching from solicam application so how how would that happen sometimes um depending on soil type uh you know so so residual herbicides the rates are adjusted according to soil type so if the soil is lighter you may see some injury from from stronger uh, residual herbicides and so um this one here is we have a plant here that that still has this uh, symptomology and we look at that and um and it could linger uh if the if the rate that happens to be applied there is much higher than intended and it could happen if your boom get caught in the branches of blackberries or something or or just factors that could cause an intended high rate of um, application so so sometimes you can see this injury on on blackberry um i i didn't see any injury from princep so i could not so i don't have a picture of that uh, either in our trial here or in hope and so I don't have a picture of potential injury from Princess.